Welcome back. <laughs> I um, hate that intro all of a sudden. I spent the entirety of this past weekend reading House of Leaves by Mark Z. Daniel Lewski, and you are about to watch that happen. I ended up vlogging the reading experience from basically the very beginning all the way through to the very end, and it was a really interesting and enlightening time. So enjoy that for the next however many minutes. <laughs> I have tons of footage and at this point I have no idea what I'm gonna be able to cut it down to, so I'm sorry if it ends up being super long. I'm gonna try not to make it super long, but enjoy the next however many minutes of me reading House of Leaves and reacting to this book in real time. There are no spoilers for this book at all throughout the entire video. But yeah, this was an interesting reading experience and uh, I'm gonna let you see how that all unfolded now. <laughs> Hello, it is currently almost 10 p.m. on Thursday, September 7th, and I just finished reading the intro to House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. As I was reading that intro, I decided that I want to vlog myself reading this book. I want to do a vlog of my reading experience because I don't really know for sure what I'm getting into. This book has been on my like TBR, like my metaphorical TBR for a really long time, but it's been on my physical TBR for a couple of years. And so I decided that this is the year that I'm going to read it. I put it on my 2023 TBR at the start of the year. And I just decided that right now is the perfect time to read it because although it isn't quite fall outside yet. It's sort of getting there. I think next week it's supposed to be in the 60s for the majority of the week, like in the mornings, which is going to be just so lovely. And so uh, I thought that this is kind of giving me fall vibes and I've sort of just been really, really enjoying digging into long, sort of complex books lately. And it just feels like the right time, finally. I'm quite a bit ahead on my Goodreads reading goal. Not that that dictates what I read and when I read it, but I am quite a bit ahead right now, so I feel like I can slow my reading down a little bit and take some time to really dig into something that I am really excited to read. And also, I just read a five-star book that I think will maybe end up on my favorites of the year list, and so I'm just feeling very inspired by reading right now, and I felt like it was the perfect time to jump into this book. So that is what I'm doing. Like I said, I did already read the intro. I will say that I don't really totally know what the book is about, to be honest. Even though the book has been on my TBR, it's been on my radar for a long time, I've never really looked too far into the actual synopsis of the book. I know it's basically like an account of this record, this um, videotape that was recorded by a photojournalist after he moved his family into this weird house and that's pretty much all I've ever known about it and it's really all I think I need to know. I feel like I'm gonna find out what this book is as I read it. I feel like the the magic and the beauty of the book is kind of uncovering what it is as you get into it. I did a lot of research before I started reading tonight because I just wasn't really sure how I wanted to approach House of Leaves and so I read a bunch of blog posts and I watched a few YouTube videos about people's recommendations for how to approach the story. So even though I don't really know too much about what it's about, I do know that the book itself, you can't see, this is pointless me holding it up, but the book itself has like an actual narrative and then there are some footnotes and I think there's like two or three different types of footnotes, like two or different, two or three different sets of footnotes from different characters perspectives and so there's lots of like debate on exactly the right way to read the book. I think that the conclusion is that there's no like 100% correct way to read the book so I'm sort of just gonna see where it goes for me. I have a hard time reading books that have footnotes because oftentimes it takes me out of the story and so I don't know how the footnotes are going to affect my reading experience. I've also seen that you can sort of like read the narrative and then you can go back and read the footnotes as almost their own story. So I'm really just gonna see sort of like where my reading experience takes me with this book. I'm, I might try to read it like the more traditional way, which is to read and when you get to a footnote, go to the footnote. If you get to like something that's referencing a later page, you flip forward. I might try to do that and see how I feel, um, but I also just want to really savor and enjoy this reading experience. And so I'm just gonna see what happens. I have all kinds of supplies here for reading because I have also read and seen and heard that it's good to have like a pen, highlighter, some sticky notes, available to you to like write things down to keep track of where you are in the story and so I've already actually like 
added a little tab because I, I like something in the intro. So I've got my tabs to like mark up things that I want to remember. And then I've got sticky notes to mark places I need to flip back and forward to if I want to. I've got a pen to make notes and underline. I already underlined in the book. So, I mean, at this point we're committed to the reading experience. And then a couple different colors of highlighters to uh, highlight the different like footnote sections if that's how I choose to approach the book. All of that said, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I'm really just anticipating how I'm going to feel about this book. I have tried to not flip through it too much. Don't want to give my give anything away to myself because although I'm not a big fan of surprises and I in fact often look up spoilers for books this is one of the books this is a book that I've always like I just want to experience it I don't want to know what's coming I just want to go into it with a completely open mind and I'm excited to do that like I said it is already almost 10 p.m tonight I have to give myself a deadline for this book because next like a week from today I'm going to be going out of town and I'm going to be out of town for the entire next weekend. So ideally I would like to finish this book before I leave town. <laughs> that really only gives me about a week to read this. It's chunky and it's supposedly difficult, complicated, so that might not be enough time, but I'm going to attempt to read the entirety of this in the next like five to seven ish days that's it i'm gonna vlog my experience i don't really know what the vlog is gonna consist of because i don't know if like i'm going to talk about spoilers i don't know if i'm going to go in depth with the plot i don't really know i think i'm just gonna like vlog my experience it might be a lot of b-roll I, I really don't know we're just gonna see where this book and this reading journey and this video takes us i'm gonna go read a little bit more before i go to sleep tonight and then i will See you at a later time when I have either something to say, something to show you, or just some general babbling to do. ever just having like a perfectly lovely Friday where nothing's really going on you finished all your work for the day you're just kind of winding the clock down waiting for 4 30 to hit and then at 3 30 the shit actually hits the fan and you have to solve the problems of the world with one hour to go in your day that was my day today so I immediately got home from work and put on like my softest comfiest t-shirt and the most threadbare pair of Sophie shorts I own and here I am I'm about to sit right here and just turn into a vegetable for the next couple of hours I have an update for you for House of Leaves I ended up staying up a little bit later than I meant to last night reading and then Although I did have a busy afternoon this afternoon, I did actually have a pretty like chill morning. So I was able to read a, a little chunk of House of Leaves. I am currently on page 54, which doesn't feel like I've made a lot of progress, but there are a lot of words on every single page. But yeah, there's like this, it's a lot. And it's sort of a very time consuming book to read. I, I don't really have much to say about the story yet. I'm still sort of like, getting into it I guess I'm very invested already though like the whole premise of the book which I didn't really talk about in my previous clip because I wasn't really 100% sure and I'm still not like 100% sure what the book is about but the essentially this is a horror novel and it's sort of like a found footage sort of story but told through transcript of the found footage or like the the found footage was turned into a movie and this is sort of a transcript of that movie about this man who moves his family into this house and he starts recording everything that occurs and pretty quickly he realizes they, the family realizes that there's something kind of weird about this house it is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside and some rooms keep like appearing and disappearing and moving and things are just like not totally what they seem about this house. I'm not 
far enough in yet to really like have any kind of idea about what's going on. I don't even know if the point of the book is to know what's going on. I think it's sort of just kind of like an experience, but that's sort of what I've gathered so far. We're getting to know this man and his family and then kind of all the players that are in his story, which is called, or he, his name is like Will Navidson and his portion of the book is the Navidson record, which is the actual film that has been transcribed. In the book, there are, there's the actual, let me see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, okay, so there's the actual text of the story. And then down here, there's the footnotes of the transcription. And some of the footnotes are uh, from Zampano. He's the one transcribing the footage initially. And so his footnotes are in like one specific font. And then the intro to the book is written by someone named Johnny who encountered the transcription of this movie. And so he is reading through the transcription and adding his own footnotes to the transcription that Zampano has compiled. So his sections are in this like courier font. Like I said previously, I wasn't totally sure how I was gonna read this book. I don't think there's a wrong way to read it from pretty much everything I'm gathering. There's no like 100% like right or wrong way <laughs> to read this book. I very quickly realized that I was not going to be able to stay in the story if I went out of it every couple of lines to read the footnotes. So what I'm doing instead is I am reading some of the footnotes. I'm reading Zampano's footnotes and the footnotes from the editors. The editors are the ones that com compiled the whole book. It's layers on layers of story, obviously. I'm marking, you can maybe kind of see, I'm marking all of the Johnny footnotes with these green post-its so that I can go back and read those sections later. I'm not really 100% sure when I'm gonna like flip back and read his sections. I'm kind of hoping that the book will just naturally tell me when I need to go back. But I have I have heard I've, from all the research I did and all the videos I watched and everything that you need to have all the stories to get the full like impact of the book. So I'm not skipping them outright. I'm just skipping them for now because his footnotes are actually quite long and it's almost like a completely separate narrative because it's his story. Like he's adding in his own personal thoughts, feelings, experiences. It's not just his opinions about this footage, this transcription. It's also like his life. And so after the very first one, which was like four pages of a footnote of Johnny's life, I realized that I wasn't going to be able to stay in the narrative story, the Navidson record, if I kept going to Johnny's story. So yeah, that's where I'm at so far. I'm engrossed in this so completely already. Even though I really have not picked up on what's going on quite yet, and I don't think you're supposed to have picked up on what's going on this early on in the book. Like there's still so much book here to get through. But I want to be reading it. Like I was at work and I was reading and then I had to deal with all this other crap. And I just wanted to be reading. And so now that I've updated the vlog and it's almost five o'clock, I don't know why I do that every time. You cannot see the time on my phone. Uh, now that it's almost five and I have updated you, I'm gonna sit right here and I'm gonna read and I will check in again when I have something to update you on. Hello, happy Saturday. I'm in my spare bedroom today because it has one, the best natural light in the house and two, a comfy place for me to lay down that isn't the living room where Cole is watching a bunch of YouTubers play video games. I am making really good progress in House of Leaves. I am right here. So I would say I'm about halfway because keep in mind, this is all I really have left to read. I'm obsessed with this book. I, <laughs> I don't want to stop reading. We had to take my parents to the airport this morning. I put the book in my bag and I read it for the entire drive home. As soon as we got home, I came in here and lay down and have been reading ever since, except for I had to stop and go take a shower. And then as soon as I got out of the shower, while I was waiting for my hair to sort of like air dry, I was reading more. And then I just like finished drying my hair with the blow dryer and now I'm about to read more. I'm filming this clip because I knew that if I waited to film an update, I wouldn't do it because I would just get sucked right back into the book. I don't want to really talk about my thoughts and feelings about the content of the book. I think I'm going to save that for the end because I don't think 
I don't really think I'm gonna have like a full opinion of the story until the book ends. But the reading experience so far is like a 10 out of 10. I'm having so much fun with this, even though it is a little bit convoluted and obviously like the footnotes in footnotes in footnotes thing is a little bit confusing, or at least it was in the couple of sections that I just finished. It's just so interesting. I was trying to explain it to Cole earlier and he was like, this sounds like a puzzle. And I'm like, yeah, it is a puzzle. And he's like, it sounds like exactly your kind of book because you love to do puzzles. I'm like, you're exact, yes, you're right. I hadn't even like thought of it in that context, but yeah, it's basically like a puzzle and I'm putting all the pieces together and I do love puzzles. And so <laughs> I'm just, I'm having such a good time. It is horror, obviously, but it isn't like jump scares horror yet. I mean, there's some, some scarier, like more, eerie moments but really the the horror element of this book for me has so far been like this really unsettling feeling that I've got as I'm reading. The more and more I read, the more into the book I get, the deeper into this house I get, the more unsettled I feel. And I just, it's kind of like that like edge of your seat, like waiting for something to come around the corner kind of feeling, the anticipation of horror rather than outright horror. But I think I'm about to get to a really good part. Like the part I'm at now is really good. It's really interesting. Like it's, I don't even really know how to talk about the book or explain what's going on in the story other than the house is not what it seems. They found or a room, a hallway appeared in this house one day and they've got some people exploring it. That's really all I'm gonna say because I, this is not the type of book that you talk about, the plot. This is the type of book that you read and experience and I know that's such an annoying thing to say but there's literally no, I mean if you have read this book you know and if you haven't read the book you don't want to know like you want to read the book and experience it for yourself. You don't, you don't need to anticipate what's gonna happen because you're gonna be anticipating what's gonna happen anyway. Ugh, I'm just, I like it so much. I'm just really having a good time. I stayed up late last night. I read this morning before we went to the airport. Like I said, I read in the <laughs> entire drive home. I have read pretty much all afternoon. We have plans tonight. And if I wasn't the one that made these plans, I would cancel them so I could stay home and read because I just want to read this book. I just want to continue being in this story. I'm gonna get back to it because I only have about an hour. I don't know if I'll do another update tonight because like I said, we're going to a football game tonight and then after the football game, we're going, we're probably gonna hang out with our friends for a little while. So I probably won't update again until tomorrow, but my plan is to, is it bold of me to say that my plan is to finish this tomorrow? If it keeps on the way it's going now, I don't think I'm gonna want to prolong it. I think I'm gonna want to just finish it tomorrow. I gave myself six days to finish it and I really, I guess I only really needed like three or four. <laughs> to stop reading right now because I have to go get ready but I just got to the part that I've been anticipating the whole time the whole like the last 200 pages I, I I wanted to know the answer to this question and I'm pretty sure I just got to the part that my question is gonna get answered and I have to stop reading for the, right now because I have to go get ready to go I said earlier that I might finish this tomorrow I might finish this tonight I don't know Oh my god. We just got home and it is already almost 11 but I am gonna read a little bit because I've literally been thinking about this book all evening. I just did my skincare and I got my pajamas on and I'm about to just lay here and see how I feel.
Hello, happy Sunday. I have a very important announcement, and that is that it feels like 60 degrees outside right now. So I'm wearing my first sweatshirt of the season. It is currently about 8.50, so almost nine, and I just got up, made myself some coffee in my jack-o'-lantern mug, uh, realized I was out of coffee creamer and had to improvise, and I have some updates for you. The big thing I wanna say is uh, do not read this book at night especially if you live in a house that is older and makes noise all the time it's creepy we were laying in bed last night and i was reading a particularly horrific scene and uh then my house started making noise and i did start to freak out cole's like you need to calm down and then i was like i think i need to stop reading for the night and he was like yeah i think that's probably a good idea i'm here in the book and i'm only reading to here mind you so i don't have that much left i did sort of skip around a little bit not um to look and see what was going to happen but i'm just trying to figure out when i need to go back and read johnny's sections i sort of peeked ahead at some of the chapters to see like if there were any chapters that were solely johnny's perspective and in fact chapter 21 is looking like it's solely johnny's perspective so i have to read this much and then i will flip back to here I so need to find out what's happening. I finished off last night and honestly, I only quit reading because it was freaking me out. I didn't actually want to quit reading. I would have probably stayed up and read even more if, um, I, if my heart wasn't racing because of what was happening in the book. I have a bunch of housework to do today. It's Sunday, it's my adult day. Like I get all my stuff done for the week and this is gonna be a particularly different week, like a difficult, I need to get more stuff ready for this week because I'm gonna be gone Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm gonna go read for, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna start off by giving myself an hour to just sit here and read. And then I'm gonna see how I feel after an hour. And then I might read, or like I might do some chores, like take a break, do a couple chores. Incentive to do the chores is finishing the book. So that's sort of my plan for right now. I had to take a small break, I had to run an errand, change clothes because it's now like 85 degrees outside. And I've been thinking about this book, you know, constantly for the last four days. But like while I was away from it for the last like hour or so, I've been thinking about how I wanna talk about it. I think I'm still gonna wait till the end of the book to kind of like give my thoughts, feelings, and opinions about the actual content of the book itself. But I am about to start the last couple of chapters before I get to the section where I'm gonna flip back and read Johnny's sections. I just kind of wanted to like summarize what I've been thinking and feeling about this book because honestly the ending of it could definitely and will definitely make or break the book for me. Without talking too much about how I'm feeling about the book itself, about the story itself, right now this book is a five star read for me. I am having the time of my life reading this book, which is crazy to say, considering uh, it's a horror book, which I don't historically love horror. It's also long and it's a difficult read as far as like really just emerging yourself in the story, emerging, immersing, that's what I meant to say, immersing yourself in the story. I'm having to really like pay attention to everything. The footnotes obviously add another layer to the story, but I'm just having such a good time and the ending really will make or break the book for me. I think that the thing that I love the most about it is the anticipation because every single chapter I'm like, okay, is this the chapter that's gonna be, that I'm gonna get the horror? Is this the chapter that's gonna be like terrifying and reveal so much about the story? Is this it? And right before I left to run an er my errand, I just went to Walmart. I don't like keep saying like I'm being vague or whatever. I, I read a really interesting chapter and it ends on such a cliffhanger and I honestly wanted to just go into the next page right then and start the next chapter. I think that this, these next two chapters that I'm about to read are going to be scary and I really am glad that it's daylight outside. I'm glad that my husband is home. I'm glad that like 
all of the circumstances of me reading these couple of chapters right now are aligning properly because I really think that something crazy is about to happen. I'm gonna time lapse myself reading chapters 19 and 20 because who knows what's gonna happen and I do want to get like my reaction if something crazy happens I do want to get my reaction to it on camera. But yeah here we go I'm like it's the beginning of the end. <laughs> God, I was not quite prepared for it to end that chapter to end that way. Oh my God, I have, I have this much of the book left, but now I have to go back and read all of these sections, Johnny's sections. And I really don't, I don't care to. I just want to like flip forward and get the end. Oh my God. I really thought, oh my God. I still, oh my God, I still have so many questions. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know how many green post-its I have there, but I have a bunch to read before I can read this last section. I'll be back. I'll be back later. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm on the floor because I needed a little change of scenery. I've been sitting on the couch for like four hours and I just needed to uh, switch things up. I read all of Johnny's sections. I took the sticky notes out. I don't know. Here we go. I'm gonna read the last 50 pages of this book and this is what's gonna determine my star rating. It's either going to be like a two star read or a five star read. Still feeling five star right now. So I hope the end doesn't disappoint me. Okay, I finished the book. I'm going to go and put myself together a little bit because I'm going to film like the intro for this vlog and I will then also film like a full wrap up of my thoughts, a, a review if you will. Yeah, I don't wanna say just yet. I wanna ponder on it for just a little bit because I'm, I'm a little bit undecided on how I want to rate it and I just wanna think on it for like 10, 15 minutes. All right, so obviously that was an interesting time. I'm still, even like an hour post finishing the book, I am still not like totally 100% sure how I feel about this book. I have gone back and forth so many times on so many aspects of the book that I just, I'm really not sure what my overall thoughts, opinions, and feelings are about it. So I'm kind of hoping that like reviewing it now will sort of 
provide me with some clarity, some enlightening thoughts hopefully will come into my brain while I am doing a final review of this book. I never really talked in the vlog obviously about the plot itself, the narrative, how I was feeling about the story. I really loved it. Honestly, like, I mean, obviously I was loving the book, but I think I indicated more so in the vlog that I was really loving the reading experience because I was, I was loving the reading experience. The reading experience alone is a five-star reading experience. I had so much fun reading this book, doing all of the like page flipping and having to read upside down and holding it up to a mirror to read sections. I think very interesting. So different and experimental in a way that was not annoying, which I appreciate because sometimes you read books like this or you hear about a book like this and the like really experimental nature of the story is just like pretentious and annoying and you can't read it. I did not find that to be true with this book. And the story itself was so engrossing. I was so invested in every character in this book, aside from one, which I will get to. <laughs> one thing that I think that the author did really well was balance the plot and the action, so to speak, with information. So obviously, the the book is broken up into chapters and each chapter is sort of focusing on a different aspect of this film whether it be like a certain section of the film or the history of the topics discussed in the film or like what the meaning of that of a section of the film is and then like the historical context behind that and it is open to to a lot of interpretation uh, by like the, the transcriber and also the reader and so you're sort of just like in it basically you you get in it and you don't you don't get out of it until you're done with it. I really liked the sections where we were actually getting to read the transcript of what was happening in the film. And I think that the author also did a really good job of making me care about characters who we never actually get to read from their perspective. You're never in the head of the characters that you're reading about, so you never actually get to know what their true motivations are. You only really get to know what their motivations are or what their presumed motivations are through the lens of the person who is transcribing. And I think it was so well done. I still cared so much about the characters. I cared about their well-being. I cared about their feelings. I cared about their relationships. I was so invested in their story and I didn't really even get to know them that well, only through the lens of this transcriber and getting to like read the transcription of the actual footage. And I think that's such a skill. Like I think it's so well done for the author to be able to make me care about characters that I really get to know very little about and to give them such agency and feeling and perspective in the story that you don't really get to, you don't get that from. And then I was also equally invested in some of the historical context of the the film. If it was in the story, it was important, obviously it was in the, in the actual narrative, the person transcribing felt like it was important to include and so I think the author also did a really good job of balancing like the actual like transcription the actual like what's happening frame by frame in the film with the historical context. I think it also added a layer of anticipation because while this is technically a horror novel I wouldn't say there's anything like outright scary about it but there's the the horror comes from the anticipation of what's going to happen next. Adding in those sections of commentary provided a little bit of levity to these moments where your heart is racing because you want to know what's going on with these characters. You want to, you, you're, you're scared to turn the page, but you have to turn the page because you have to know what's going to happen next. And so having those other sections in there gave me a time to breathe. And I appreciated that. I think it was very well balanced. I will be giving this book five stars. I have been debating for, you know, since I finished it, even like before I finished it, I was like, is this a five star read? It was definitely giving me that five star feeling and I am gonna give it five stars. But I am also gonna throw in a caveat that I think that this book could completely do without Johnny's perspective and that might be controversial to say, or this might even be more controversial to say, but I think if you want to read this book and you wanna skip Johnny's perspective entirely, you won't suffer. I really don't think that it added very much to the story and it definitely didn't add anything to my enjoyment of the story. And in fact, I'm giving this five stars in spite of Johnny's perspective. I'm glad that I didn't read it while I was reading the rest of it because I think it would have just really, I would have ended up DNFing the book or it really just would have like taken away from my enjoyment of the story. But because I read basically all of it and then 
added him in his his context in I could separate the two in my brain and so I can very easily separate him out from the rest of it and I can give this book I can very confidently give this book five stars and just disregard Johnny completely and I really think that that's the way to go honestly I mean like House of Leaves purists are gonna come for me for saying that but I really just don't think that his perspective added anything to the book that you can't understand for yourself like you as the reader are going to pick up on what is happening and what his portion like kind of represents in the story you're already gonna like be feeling that so you don't really need his his perspective to make you feel that all that being said i don't think that this is a book that i could re recommend to everyone i think it's for a very specific type of reader and i think that if you read the intro and maybe the first couple of pages and you're not feeling it then you're not the type of reader that needs to read this book i say that with as much objectivity as possible that this is a book that I'm giving five stars and will likely be a favorite book of the year and something that I could see myself revisiting in the future because I just think that it is a cool reading experience and I think that I could get something else out of it on a second reading. I can read it a different way and get more out of it but that's not going to be the case for everyone. This is not going to be a book that everyone will want to just dedicate the time and energy that it takes to read it it's a commitment like it is a commitment and not everybody's gonna want to make that commitment and not everybody should make the commitment because it's not going to be a book for everyone and you should not force yourself to read this book if you think at all it is not going to be something you enjoy and you're going to be able to tell pretty quickly if it's going to be something that you enjoy if you can get to like page 50 75 ish it becomes a much easier read you sort of get into the rhythm of the story you get into the flow of the narrative style i gave myself an entire week to read this book and i read it in three days so you know you can get through it quickly. It's not as intimidating as its size makes you think. I don't know that I care to read more from this author because I think that this is just like an accomplishment in itself. I know that he's quite an experimental author and has done different types of books besides this one. I think that this is probably enough of his writing for me, but this is a book that I will be rereading. Like I can, I can tell you right now that this is a book that I will revisit in a year's time, a couple of years time, and just see what else I can get out of it. I loved it. And I'm so glad that I finally got around to reading it after it's been on my TBR for many, many years. So yeah, that's it. That is my vlog and review of House of Leaves by Mark Z. Danielewski. Overall, one of the best reading experiences I've ever had, and I'm so glad that I read this book. If you've read it, I would really love to know. What are your thoughts, opinions, feelings? Please let me know all the things down in the comments. Obviously be wary of spoilers in the comments because some people might have watched this vlog that uh, want to read this book now and I would love for them to read it without getting spoiled. If you want to talk to me about spoilers, uh, you can message me on Instagram or uh, send me a message on YouTube. I don't know how it works, but you know, you can DM me on Instagram or TikTok or whatever because I would love to talk about it with somebody. I would love to talk about my you know just how it blew my mind with someone because i can't talk to anybody about it that's all i've got for this video thank you so much for watching i hope you enjoyed it and i will see you again very soon bye